When deciding how to integrate your professional writing samples into your ePortfolio, you actually have quite a few options. One of the most common decisions that many students made in the past was just to put the title and the context on the web page itself and then to attach the document as a linked PDF. And you can see that here. Uh, something like a button and then when you click it, it would go into, uh, turn that tab into the PDF and you can see the title of that here. And while it does work, it is, it is quite efficient, if you notice once you go into that PDF space, it sort of takes away the look of the web page for a moment and then you sort of have to go back into the web space. So I've created five different samples to show you additional things that you can do with the text from each of the individual samples and the context to give it a different look. One way you might do it is just to place the context and the title on a page, use one of the section lines, and then place the piece copying and pasting it below using maybe a different margin or something to show that it's separate. You could do the same, sort of something similar if you wanted to bring in a thumbnail of the images to sort of give them a sense of what it looked like. I'm using a rubric just to, to sort of give you a sample, but you can see it's all there on the page. There is another video that I've created that shows you how to convert a PDF into a JPEG, so you can watch that one. You may, though, once you realize that you're bringing in that thumbnail image, realize that you don't need to place all of the text on the page itself. Maybe you like the separation of the context and the pieces. You don't necessarily want to see them together. You can uh, create in Weebly the option where if you click the thumbnail, and you'll see here I've got a little text here, click the thumbnail to view a lar larger version of the document, it will sort of pop it up to 100% height. But depending upon how large the text on that page is, it may or may not be big enough to read. On this one, it's big enough to see the organization, but it's really not big enough to read the text. So how would you work around that? Using the same setup, um, but notice I moved, um, did a little bit of formatting for some more alignment and proximity with the title of the text and the image. You can actually link the thumbnail to the PDF, so much like we did in the download page if they click it, then it goes to the PDF page. So um, it is opening it in a different tab, uh, but it's got a little bit more connection to the piece and the context than if we go back to what we had here where you don't really see any sort of image of the piece. Okay, So that's one contrast. A th an additional option is to embed a Google Doc within the Weebly page. And again, there's a video for how to do that to get the code and everything. Uh, this might be a, a way for you to create the context at the top, do some sort of a line, and then the actual sample itself is going to be at the bottom, it, again, in a different treatment, much like I did here um, on page one where I created um, the, the different columns. So what does that look like in Weebly? If I go back in on the downloads page very easily, it's just bringing in the title, the text. This is a button, and then what I've done is I've linked it to a file which I uploaded to the website. For this one, very simple, uh, the same title, the text block box with the content, uh, the line which you can get from more, it's just the divider line, and then here to get the different margins I actually did a three column block and then just put the text block in the middle of it, but again I could adjust this very easily. Um, if I wanted to do something like put an image. And all I really did just to balance it out was uh, I sort of guessed to see when the text disappeared because I assumed it was fairly similar margins on both sides. So just a little trick there. To get this look, uh, what I did was I pulled down the in the uh, basic tab, I did the paragraph with a picture and then added in the thumbnail and then all the text that I needed with uh, typed in the title, so that's very simple. For the thumbnail zoom, I did a title, a two column text and image, and then I clicked this button, open larger image when clicked, and you can turn that on and off. You can also change, as before, all the different positionings. And if you're gonna do that, make sure you do have some sort of written navigation about how someone can get a larger version. For the thumbnail to a PDF, very, very similar. 
This time I actually pulled the title into the column because I really liked everything lining up against the image. And then instead of doing the open larger image, I clicked link image and then did the same uh, upload file and chose that. For the embedded Google Doc, title, text box, section header, and then the custom HTML with the HTML code that, again, like I said, there's a video to sh sort of walk you through the sizing on that. Um, but that's how to work with the documents in several different ways. It's really up to you what type of look you're going for, whether you want the context on the same page as the sample itself, or whether you'd like the context and the sample to be separate, whether you'd like the sample to be easily viewable on the page itself, or whether you like the cleaner look of going to the PDF version that does allow for the downloads and all of that. Um, all that I would say is whatever system you choose, think of consistency throughout the entire ePortfolio. Uh, it's going to be more distracting if you choose five different ways of embedding the, the documents than if you just choose one or two depending on uh, you know, the media, whether you're doing a presentation or whether you're doing a longer report, things like that. Um, I'd be more than willing to walk you through different options and do let me know if you have any, uh, if you'd like any more feedback about these different ways. I can always make an individual video to show you exactly how I created that page.